Alright, so I will be reviewing my custom squad personal best and using it as a tutorial of sorts um, to demonstrate how to pull off the missions in into the bridge as quickly as you can. Um, I will turn off audio here because just so that you can focus on my voice and stuff is not really important. Um, I will demonstrate first of all, maybe B starts off by getting a normal mission. Normal missions are basically animations that aren't the one that you will see later in the video. <laughs> so, uh, what happens in normal mission is you have two Vex from the get-go, at least on easy difficulty. On harder difficulties they have more enemies, but on easy, which is the most commonly speed rank category. You have two Vex here. And then you will have two more that will spawn in the Rexer, and then one more, and then two more again, and then the mission ends. So what you want to do here is, since you have five Vec that will be spawning, at your, on the last turn you can only block three anyway, you want to allow the first two to spawn. Uh, and the first two spawn on turn one, well, after your turn one. So what happens here is you want to um, kill this first two Vex that spawn on your first turn uh, all while trying to position yourself as well as possible to jump onto the Vex that spawn on the next turn there are two more and since on that turn you will only have uh, two newly spawned Vex plus uh, one that will be trying to emerge and you want to block um, that means that your three mechs can each take care of one vec, and the mission will flow perfectly. And this will become evident as you see the video demonstration here. Um, so, these two vec are what I want to kill first. Um, obviously, I have to move the blue mech to kill this one because it has three health, and I want to kill the this explosion AoE guy first. So they don't take any damage. Uh, so I use the red mech there and then I use the blue mech here. That's very basic things. You will get used to uh, figuring out uh, and like kind of just intuitively knowing the quickest ways to kill things uh, depending on your squad uh, as soon as you play a lot of them. Uh, it's not really the, the hard part of this, uh, because you will just get a lot of practice with it naturally by running. And then you see that here, uh, with my third mech, with the ice mech, I could choose to block, but I choose not to for what I said earlier, because I can only block um, three uh, vec in the last turn anyway, so it's no point blocking any earlier. Uh, if I block any earlier, what happens is that um, these Vec will try to merge and they will uh, have all of those animations of trying to merge every turn and then at the end of the mission on the last turn I will still have one extra Vec to deal with because I cannot possibly cover more than three Vec spawns on the last turn unless well, on very specific uh, missions where you have like extra allies, I guess you can. Or if you're very good at manipulating enemies, but uh, if you're manipulating enemies, that means those enemies are alive, and so they're playing their own animations. So, in general, it's just not, not really worth it to do anything other than this. Obviously, there are very... Uh, there are multiple exceptions that can come up but they're very like tricky to figure out so in general you should always be trying to do this uh because it's really fast it's never going to be slow doing this um so as you saw on turn three two vex spawned uh i used two max to take care of them and then i used the third mech to block the one that spawned after um i tried to position myself so that i would cover all of the possible spawn locations. And thankfully the game worked with me here. Uh, if the game doesn't work with you and you can only block two spawns, uh, tough luck. But sometimes it happens, uh, it's no big deal. You just kill the vector spawns and that's that's the end of it really. Um, but here I was able to uh, move my max like this to block all of them. Uh, moving your vec, your max 
to cover all of the spawns is also something that will grow quite naturally with practice. Um, so that was a standard mission. Uh, the fact that it only had one star, this doesn't affect uh, spawns. It doesn't make less enemy spawn, you still have the same number of enemies. All that the single star does is it adds shields to your buildings. So for with laser max, for example, you're more free to try risk your angles because sometimes you'll just hit the shield. But it's not very important. Like you can treat you should treat the one uh, star missions pretty much equally as the two star missions, unless you have uh, unless the two star missions obviously are some of the special ones. But that one is one of the you can consider it essentially perfectly normal. Is what I'm saying. Uh, next, we'll take a look at one of the best missions. You always want to find this mission, Defend the Train. Uh, it's one of the best ways to save time in this game, because you can see from the turn counter here, there is one less turn in this mission. Uh, the normal missions start on five turns, train mission four turns, which is amazing. Um, now, in the train mission, uh, since you have one less turn, the VEC also spawn differently. Um, you only have two, and then one, and then one. Uh, which means that you can actually uh, just block one on the first turn. Because then you will have uh, a VEC to take care of, and two. No, and just one more spawn to block. So essentially, you have four VEX spawning throughout the entire course of the map. So it means that ideally you want three of them to stay underground forever and one of them to pop out as soon as possible. Uh, and so obviously, uh, two of them pop up on the first turn already. So what happens is you block one, you let the other one spawn and then kill it as soon as possible. And then you just block the other back throughout. Um, another thing important if you're trying to save time on the train mission is you want to kill the train. Uh, this is especially easy with laser max uh, because you will have this situation where a VEC went straight up to the train to try and hit it. Uh, but it's doable with most classes. Uh, the train has the animations of it uh, going all the way up. Those animations take time, you don't really need the reputation, uh, especially on custom squad. Uh, so very often the play is just to kill the train as soon as you can. If the Obviously if the layout allows for it, sometimes you just can't do it because the VEC don't collaborate, but when you can you want to do it. Um, some classes need the reputation because they badly need upgrades because they're bad classes, but <laughs> on the good classes. Uh, kill the train on the bad classes make a judgment call uh, plan your upgrades but yeah so uh, I block one I kill the two vec now one vec will spawn here and one vec will try to surface the same vec that was spawning on that was blocking on the first turn just stand still to block again then your one of your two free mechs kills the vec that just spawned one of your other vecs blocks and that's the end of the level, actually. Actually, yeah, I misspoke. Uh, you can actually block all two on the first turn. <laughs> I misremembered that. Um, but it's very, very rare, because the train mission... Uh, if you can, if you just see the layout, right? On the first turn, you have... Let me go back to the first turn here. Uh, a little more. Okay, here. Um, you can see that you have four things to take care of. Vec, Vec, Spawning, Spawning, Vec. Um, and you only have three mechs. So sometimes they line up very nicely, and sometimes you can actually just block both. But in the vast majority of cases, you're just going to have to accept blocking one and killing the other. And it works out as, you, as I just showed uh, very nicely. So, we skip forward again. Uh, another very good mission coming up. Uh, it's the Tidal Wave mission. Uh, as 
I flow through it. Tidal waves. When you see this, you always want to go for it because once again, another one that has four turns. It's for the same reason as the train. Normally you want to avoid weather conditions because they take time between turns all to play all the animations. But uh, this one evens out because you have um, you have less turns. Now, Tidal Wave is very tricky because you have a lot of things spawning and very often you cannot block them. So generally what you want to do on Tidal Wave is just kill what you can. Well, try to kill everything and then block what you can, really. Uh, keep in mind that anything on the on the area is going to wash up uh, at the end of the turn. So you can avoid uh, doing anything for those back. Uh, there is really not an exact science to the other wave missions, I think. Because it's very difficult to get all the blocks, because very often you will start like in the middle and there will be buildings in the way, so it's really hard to get back to where the VEC actually spawn. Um, so just, that one is one of the more intuitive ones, just block as much as you can and hopefully everything goes well. Um, now I get to show off one of the normal missions that are a bit, that have like one odd condition, that is the volatile VEC. This is not inherently slower. Uh, but uh, you will see here that it is a lot trickier and I do actually lose time to this. Um, so this is an, it has the same spawns of a normal mission but one of the fir of the starting vac that spawn initially is a volatile vac. Uh, and now obviously classes with the ice mech so custom and freeds are a lot better at dealing with it. Here I misclick and this is actually going to turn out to be massive but uh, you can pretend that I just was screwed by RNG or something, because uh, the concept I'm trying to demonstrate applies the same. Um, if you cannot, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is if due to, t to circumstances such as the volatile vac being in the way or a misclick or anything like that, um, if you cannot block this first spawn on turn three, it's still just fine because now you have one vector that surfaced and two vec that are trying to surface. And this is perfectly okay, because you have uh, three available mechs, so one can kill and two can block. So it's lower, because you have to see the enemy go up, prepare their attack, and then you have to actually kill it, rather than just blocking it. Uh, but it is very, very similar uh, in practice, because uh, that enemy is going to try to surface on two turns, because it spawns early. So you actually skip the second surfacing animation as a trade-off for the VEC moving and attacking animation. So it is lower, but not by much. It's fine if that happens. It's completely fine. Um, so if you have to give up your block on tour 3, uh, just just give it up. It's not no big deal. Um, so here I will show off uh, the, this corporate missions as well. Uh, if you have a mech that can freeze the or get rid of the boss in one hit, pretty much just the freeze mech really. Those are very rare, but uh, take care of the boss as soon as you can. Generally, um, obviously there's the exception of the goo boss, because that goo boss, if you kill it, it splits, so that just loses time. So what you want to do with the goo boss is just kind of push him around and make sure it doesn't do any damage. It's really easy to manipulate it, but uh, it loses a bit of time. Uh, at least on most classes. Some classes actually like facing it, but not, not most of them. So, other than that tangent, uh, in a boss mission you have two... Well, you have a boss and a regular enemy, you have only one trying to spawn here, and then you will have only one and only one in the next two turns as well. So if you're really lucky and everything lines up perfectly, you can block already on first turn and then on the second and then on the third. If you can do that, that's the best outcome for these missions. If not, it's completely fine. Again, um, for these VEC that try to spawn on the first turn, if you cannot block them, it's fine. You just kill them the next turn. It's no big deal. Uh, the surfacing animation takes its time just as well. So if you can, it's it's nice. 
because you can just smash through the turns much more easily if you don't have anything alive to take care of and you just have to move your mechs to blocking positions. But um, even if you can't get it to block here, uh, as it happened here, does it lay out? Um, just let it spawn and then you can very comfortably block, kill, I messed up my hotkeys there for a minute, but uh, yeah, block, and just one block again, so it's fine. Uh, I don't have, uh, a, unfortunately this PB doesn't show off the situation where you can block on first turn, but uh, all that happens is that that fact that I killed just stays underground and I have to use my third bank on the last turn, so no big deal at all. Um, obviously this is only really true for classes with the ice mech because classes that cannot do that kind of have to uh, have to um, be a lot more creative dealing with the boss but um, one thing that is important to notice in this sense going back to this original turn one uh, board state yep you can see that I have, yes I'm able to answer the boss in one, but I still have one leftover mech. Because that's how good this class is, you can have one leftover mech <laughs> on these kind of turns. Uh, so most regular classes can actually just kill, uh, well not most of them, but some of them at least, can just take care of the extra enemy and use two mechs to just bother and start damaging the boss. So then on the second turn, uh, they still only have one more enemy, one block to do, and then hopefully with the third mech they can actually finish off the boss. Um, obviously it changes class to class and it's really hard to demonstrate in one univocal uh, like, uh, demonstration, but uh, overall the idea is if you who if you use two mechs, you have two free mechs for the boss on turn one, and then one free mech on turn two, and generally that is enough if things go your way. But it's definitely a much harsher reset point on slower classes, or time loss point at least, um, because not all of them have the luxury of cleaning up side enemies so cleanly. Not all of them have the luxury of clearing the boss in less than three hits so it's it's tricky sometimes but that's uh all you need to see about the boss mission um another mission that is worth showcasing is the cataclysm mission i will skip ahead to it here you want to pick this cataclysm mission is for the same reason as tidal wave it's really similar to tidal wave the one thing that changes and it actually makes cataclysm better than tidal wave is that you always have two spawns and they are always on the last uh, roll. So on the one that is just about to collapse. So you can really um, plan your turns around that. Ideally you can block two of them every turn, because there's always two. Two on this turn, two on the next turn. Um, ideally you can plan around it. Uh, this time the placements really didn't work out. but. Uh, it's really not a big problem generally. Um, keep in mind that your floating mechs can live this, and they're, but your non-floating mechs, non-flying mechs, will actually fall and die, so you have to watch out for that here. Um, but other than that, uh, this mission, when it works out, you can just block everything, and all the turns are just two mechs trying to spawn, you blocking them, and nothing happens. And then the next mission here, uh, actually no, not the next mission, the one after that. This one is a standard mission which I've already demonstrated. Here. There are some maps that have these holes in the ground on RST exclusively. There's, I think, four different maps? Yeah, four different... four... yes, four. <laughs> okay, there's this one, and then there's one with like a C up here, and then there's like five holes in the C. If you've seen them, you probably remember them. Uh, and then there's one with just two holes, and then another hole standalone over there. And then there's another one with just three holes, like this, and then two rows of buildings. Well, anyway, 
um, you will learn to recognize them if you don't recognize them al already. But what these ults do is um, enemies spawn through them and you will see through this footage that, well, it's especially true when you have a laser mech, but it's true in most cases that uh, the spawn animation is just much faster. See, it just kind of floats up, it's very quick, um, and they tend to be lined up, and they all have two health, which means they're really easy to kill as well. It's just the dream. This mission is really good. It lasts five turns like the others, it's not doesn't do anything special, but the way the enemies spawn and the fact that they all have two health makes it really fast, really easy. If you have like Blitzkrieg, Lightning Mech or Zenith Guard Laser Mech, blow through multiple of them at once. Uh, even if you don't, just anything that pushes, you can bonk them into each other for extra damage. It's, they're really, really easy to clear out. Uh, if you see a map, when, when you're on an RST, you want to check all of the normal missions just in case you see a map with a hole, because when you find it, it's a huge time save. So, those are all the missions that you want to do. Um, let me cover the ones that you don't want to do real quick. I have this uh, table here. There are bad missions that are bad because they have extra animations. So, all the, other, all the weather condition ones, um, so like Lightning Storm is an especially bad one, uh, but there's also Seismic Activity, both of these on RST. There is uh, like Air Support, the one with the planes coming in and dropping bombs on Archives. Uh, those are all bad, because uh, those animations play between turns and they take up time. And you're just never going to recover that time in any way, uh, because you can clear out all of the missions without the need for that kind of external help. So, they might be nice on like hard difficulty or whatever, but I don't know, because I haven't ran it. On easy, you want to avoid extra animations like they're the devil, because they're really slow, they don't help you in any way. Um, and then other small uh, things to note, satellite launch uh, on archives. These satellites, they don't take that much animation time, but if you can avoid it, you should try to avoid it, because it's just like 4, possibly 5, 6 seconds lost for no reason, uh, watching the satellites prime and then launch. Uh, you can kill the satellites to avoid the animations playing, but obviously that requires your mech, your vec having, or your max rather, having free turns, which you just don't have all that often. Um, for the same reason Earth Mover in DST, or RST, what is DST? <laughs> RST, um, the Earth Mover is just a small animation every turn, you can kill it to save time, it's not the end of the... the, the end of the world is the expression I was searching for there. <laughs> it's not the end of the world if you have to do an Earth Mover mission because it's just in the way. But it is a bit slow and you can kill the Earth Mover with two extra damage and it's usually worth it because you save up that little animation every single turn. Um, and there are type 2 bad missions which are the ones that just spawn extra enemies. The Terraformer in RST uh, to compensate for the fact that you have a terraformer, it spawns extra enemies. That is bad because although you can kill those extra enemies, those are still all extra animations flowing in. If you can just do a standard mission and do it well, it's a lot better than picking the terraformer. Um, on archives, there are uh, maps where mines just spawn on the ground everywhere, and to compensate for those mines spawning everywhere, um, they they just make extra enemy spawn and as well there uh, some enemies might run into a mine sure thing but uh, that's still all extra animations that you're going to have to see through and there's no one likes that doing that so avoid those um, and then anything with three rewards uh, those also have an alpha enemy just on top of the rest and it actually it doesn't seem like a big deal, just one extra enemy, but it actually screws up all of your planning very, very often. So if you can avoid three rewards, do it. If you have to take three rewards, take it on the missions with like the terraformer actually. <laughs> 
Terraformer 3 rewards is not the end of the world because you can just get rid of multiple enemies at once with the Terraformer, but it is still obviously a pain in the ass. It's it's not fast. <laughs> if you're forced to, you don't usually toss away your entire run to it. But if you can avoid it, three rewards, just just don't mess with them. Um, last thing I wanted to demonstrate here as well uh, is a strategy on the Vec Hive. Uh, the first floor is really chaotic, and the strategies change all the time depending on what happens, depending on your squad. But one thing that I want to showcase here that it is also a really easy and really important time saver. Um, you want to block these first two spawns on turn one, as I did just now. Even if I'm wasting this mech not attacking, this is very, very, very important. Because um, on the second turn, you have, as soon as the animations play, you will see. Even if you lose power, it's not a big deal, because you're almost at the end. You don't need this anymore. See, you have this con this weather condition, let's call it that, where those squares will disappear into the ground. And so these enemies you block on turn 1, it's essentially as if you kill them forever. And that is really, 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 really good for the purpose of skipping animations and all of that. Um, so, obviously you don't need to do it, and sometimes the spawns are in just impossible positions, but if you can, on this last, on this second phase of the back hive, always, 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 no matter what, block the spawning enemies. Because this, the bomb has 4 HP, your pylons, you have multiple things on your grid. It's not a big deal. Just block those. Skip the animations as many as you can, and then take care of the live max. And it will save a lot of time. And those are all the tips I have, uh, all of the missions that you can that generally apply for all the squads. Obviously, I demonstrated them with a really broken team. Um, if you're running a lesser squad, all of those maneuvers are just less consistent to pull off, generally harder sometimes, you just don't have anything that deals 3 damage in one hit. And so it's really painful dealing with early game enemies that have 3 health. Um, it's uh, it's not obviously being procedurally generated, you can never have like universal setups or tutorials, but I feel like that covered just about everything you need to know to really, really start going very fast in this game. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Um, let me know if there's any questions you want to answer, if, it, if there's any part of this video that isn't clear. You can leave a comment or find me on Discord or leave a comment on Spirion.com even. Uh, I'll try to answer. Thank you for watching. Um, have a good day. Have a good luck on your runs.